I think your claim to fame is Jeff Gordon. Okay, guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's Zachary Reality, and we are so excited to be joined by Olivia from Claim to Fame. If you guys have not been watching Claim to Fame this season, you are missing out. I've been covering it every single week on my channel, and I've had on Carly, I've had on Jada, but now we are here with the most recently eliminated guest, Olivia. The biggest shock factor value ever. This was the biggest shock of the season so far, so I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you have red hair. And I'm so excited that your aunt is Jenny McCarthy. So welcome to my show. Oh, thanks for having me on, Zachary. Slay, redhead, slay. Let's go. We're slay. Are you a natural <laughs> redhead? I am. I actually wanted to dye my hair before the show, and I figured I shouldn't because I thought it would mislead people. So yeah. And it did. And it did because they all thought you were related to Carrot Top. And like I was so convinced because I'm just like, of course she is. Like that's what everyone says. Like, yeah, they're right. Who even is Carrot Top? Did you know who that was and why you were being compared to her? Um, Carrot Top's actually a male comedian and I know of Carrot Top enough to like play it off. So it worked out when they said props and stuff. I was like, they're saying Carrot Top. Also, by the way, I use they, them and she, her pronouns and I prefer okay. they, them. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for clarifying. The reason I started watching Claim to Fame and actually a lot of my audience is because it is on at the exact, at the time of The Bachelorette. So it was before, now it's after. So now it's just kind of like, um, it kind of got us into the show. It got us hooked in. That makes sense. Yeah. I honestly have never seen The Bachelorette, but I love the premise, but Bachelor, Bachelorette, I just, I have never watched it i'm a survivor person that's really where my mm. reality tv goes so okay i love survivor that's like my first love do you have a preference with like the time changing now that it just switched or does it matter i don't think it matters i think i mean it's good for both shows to switch back and forth anyway i guess 10 is kind of late for some people but that's kind of when my night starts so i'm okay with 10 being claim to fame time yeah, yeah i haven't i haven't thought too much about it like the switch but i'm i really like claim to fame way better than the bachelorette to be completely honest because the bachelorette it's is my... so boring and claim to fame <laughs> is so interesting i'm so into the strategy having that like love for survivor like you were saying so is that kind of what made you excited to join this show yeah i mean i okay full transparency when i first got contacted to do the show i i work in film as a cinematographer and i had just shot my first reality tv show called go go for the gold which is like a male go go dance competition it actually mm -hmm. finished yesterday which was really fun but okay. when i got the call for this i thought it was to shoot it so when they were asking me questions like oh would you be interested to do the show and blah 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 i was like yeah of course and then when i finally got to an interview um they were like yeah so you're comfortable in front of the camera and i like had to play it off because i realized it was a cast call and not a crew call and i was like this is a casting call right and they said yes and i said yeah, I love being in front of the camera. And I honestly did it because I love Survivor. I want to be on Survivor. So I thought it would be a good way to learn how the process is to get cast on Survivor. And then once I got the call saying I was confirmed for the show, I was like, well, I'll just do it and like develop strategy and learn more about myself. It's really funny seeing yourself on TV. So Yeah, oh, I just I love that you love Survivor because it is really similar in a lot of I ways that there is an element yeah. of strategy, there is an element of social gameplay, and then there's challenges. You want to win. It's basically Survivor for, like, rich people, because you guys are all and in a mansion. Survivor plus pop culture, you know what I mean? There's a little bit of pop culture in there, yeah. And I'm really bad with celebrities and names and everything, so I knew that I would lack in that part, but I was really excited in the strategy part. Yeah, I'm like, if you ask me anything about reality TV, I'll know everyone, but these are, like, a lot of actors and celebrities I've never heard of. Like, obviously, I know Jenny McCarthy, obviously, no Tom Hanks, but, like, I didn't know who... Uh, Carson's fake relative was the race car driver. Uh, I didn't either. JR told me that was the race car driver. And I went, okay, I'm going to go with that. I have no idea. I don't know anything about race cars. So race car, mm. that's not even the correct way to say it. That's how little I know. Yeah, yeah. So you weren't even convinced that Carson's relative was Jeff Gordon. You were just kind of listening to the house. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know who Jeff Gordon is. Yeah. I, I'd never heard that name before, but like JR and I were very close and he was like very certain it was Jeff Gordon. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go with that. Like, and I, I, I yeah, he believed it too so no no fault to him we just all did with, with what we do so well so looking back do you think that anyone in the house wanted you to guess wrong uh I mean I think in hindsight since no one knew who I was even I would want me to guess wrong if I was in their position so I don't think anything uh I don't think anything would lead to you not feeling that way but at the same time I don't think at least with how it looks I don't think 
Chris necessarily thought it was wrong. I do think everyone thought it was Jeff Gordon, but I also think that is because everyone in the show clearly had a lack of knowledge about NASCAR. So I think that plays part of it too. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would be interested to ask you out of all people, like how the gameplay compares to Survivor and maybe the circle and maybe Big Brother. In this house, it does seem like everyone is friends, but it does seem like a few people have like agendas, especially Chris, which I want to ask you about. So I'm wondering like how the strategy plays in. Um, I think everyone's strategy was different. I mean, for me personally, I never got lucky enough to be a captain. So I never got a hold of a clue or anything. So my strategy really had to be more social. And I think that I took into account, forget his name, but he won Survivor two seasons ago, but the way he won was just by laying low really hard. That was part of my strategy. I think I did a great job because my clue never even got picked. So I clearly laid really low. And then another part of my strategy was just being honest with everyone saying that I really didn't know pop culture and celebrities. So I was like, you want to keep me as long as you can because I will not be able to guess you. But in hindsight, I also think that made people not too intentional with showing clues with me because most likely I wasn't going to know them. And truthfully, I don't think I even could have recognized my own clue. So <laughs> that was my strategy. I think it worked for the time being. And then actually, I wrote out every single um, guess off. If I went up, who I would guess. And every single one, I would have guessed the exact same as everyone else did. And mm -hmm. episode six, which is my illumination episode, I circled that and I was like, okay, if I get up here, this is when I start getting in trouble. And then that's the episode I got out on. So I also kind of predicted that's when I was going to get out. Yeah, it's like we always know in the back of our head, like before it actually happens. But I definitely saw you as an underdog. I felt like you had a, a lot of alliances in the house. It seemed like everyone liked you and you weren't out on anyone's radar because you were playing the middle for so long. So I was reading one yeah. of your interviews with Hollywood Life when you were saying that you know, you could have won if you got to the end because no one truly knew who you were, who you, who you were related to, and you were staying so under the under the belt. You had good relationships, so I was so shocked, and the audience was so shocked. So, how does it feel to kind of have that moment of the season? Like this was mind blowing for anyone invested. I mean, I think it just really highlights the show is about strategy but also knowledge of pop culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I knew a little bit more about celebrities in general, I probably could have got a little farther, but the show is about luck, timing, strategy, and knowledge. And I think that knowledge part is where I already knew. I was like studying Jeopardy celebrity mm -hmm. and like uh, doing TikTok, like filters where they show celebrity faces and ask my friends being like, who is this? What do they do? Who is this? Because I just really don't know pop culture. Um, so yeah, I knew that would going I, for, I already forgot what you asked me no I was asking like how does it feel to have like the most shocking moment like what was the reaction I was I honestly you know you leave not really knowing what happened and all of us are really close and all of us talk still and everyone said like no you're good like we we literally no one knew but I was still pressed in the back of my head that maybe a few people did know I like wasn't like that played which actually feels great I kind of forgot everyone was really shocked about Jenny so yeah, it does feel good at least for people to be like, yeah, you would have gotten far. I'm like I would have gotten far. <laughs> I wouldn't even have packed Jenny. So I think like the audience was shocked because of the editors. I think the editors did a really good job of not, you know, showing any of your clues or, you know, have no one guessed who you were, you know, related to that we saw on the show. So it's just like the editors did a really good job piecing it together. So the audience just had such a natural reaction. And like, I really thought Carson was going home and I am so proud of Carson for playing the game so strategically. She had everyone fooled. And now I'm just like really invested to see where Carson goes because she was dangling on. She go almost got eliminated three weeks in a row. I don't know if you could like say who you think we should watch out for. Like, who do you, who do you think is in the best position to win, I guess, right now from a viewer's perspective, if you can kind of answer that. I mean, I guess right now I would definitely say Chris and Gabe seem in a pretty good position only mm -hmm. because they both are doing a great job sharing clues. They both are, like they said themselves, in positions of power. Yeah. Um, and they're both pretty well liked in the house by everyone as well. Um, I really loved Gabe and I really loved Chris and I was working with both of them as well. So I don't think if, if I lasted, I don't think I would have hid any information from them as well. So I think they're doing a really good job playing the game together. I know what happens. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to know because I'm like, I'm not even Googling people's um, celebrity relatives. You can find out online. I've told my audience I, that's that. That's the best way to watch it. Don't look up anything. Just yeah. play along. I don't want to know. I did accidentally see JR's, so I'm a little annoyed, but I still don't know anyone else's, and I'm going to try and keep it like that as long as possible. But I did want to ask you about Chris, because I'm watching him every week. I feel like he is so strategic. He's so smart, savvy, cutthroat, 
but also like so charismatic and likable like you can't help but root for him but also you, he's the villain so what was it like playing with yeah. him and, and seeing his personality on the show um, there are so many moments that just don't get into the show just because of timing purposes and editing purposes but Chris and I uh, we were really close in the show. We had this one moment, probably about a week in, where we really had like a long conversation about him being a dad and me talking about my dad. And I just felt really close to him after that. Um, so I really think he was someone I saw that I could trust. But later down the line, I will say there were quite a few moments where I feel I felt like he was misleading me, but I just gave him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he just didn't know what he was talking about. Um, that being said, he was playing a great game. I mean, I didn't even realize how much strategy he was playing out until watching the show so I think mm -hmm. he's killing it dude I mean also too the whole Jim Carrey thing uh I clung to that so hard because my relative is Jenny and she used to date Jim and so I thought that Jim Carrey being in the house was like a crazy twist the, pro the producers had so I was so convinced about Jim Carrey because of that yeah and it, it's yeah. like once one person thinks something it's like the whole house kind of thinks it I mean those questions during that last challenge was so were so intense and so specific and so cutthroat because everyone because the other person's in the other room and it was just like what was it like filming that I was mind blown how hard you guys went at each other yeah I mean I remember right before going on I was annoyed because I felt like I told the producers, I was like, well, what if I just make a crazy face? And if they asked me, like, I don't know, is your relative a comedian? I would just be like, yeah. Like, I just thought, like, I would make a crazy face so they couldn't read into it. And they were like, if you do that, we're going to say you cheated. And I was like, okay, fine. So, um, but I actually had a, real, a lot of fun because, like I said on the show, I just kind of confused myself. Like, I really just, in my head, was thinking other questions when they were asking me questions. And I think it worked because... I don't think anything got anything or got any yeah any information from me in that challenge so you had bad luck I feel like you played a really good game and it was the luck that was on your side not not on your side were you campaigning for yeah. people to vote Chris as the guesser and not you or did you not care well okay so it overlapped two days the first day because I was actually really close with Monet JR Hugo and Gabe at this point um, closer than I was with Chris and Carson, just because I realized there was a lot more clues they were sharing among, amongst each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so also they're the majority, so they kind of had to say, and, and they told me, yeah, you're fine. We want Chris out. We're going to have him talk. And I was like, okay, or we're, we're going to have him guess. And I was like, okay, cool. And then went to bed, got a great sleep that night because I really wasn't pressed. And then the next morning, so many people were talking and I ended up talking to Monet and JR. And I was like, hey, what's going on? And they were like, okay, it needs to be you. And I was like, why? And they were like, he's gonna guess Hugo. And you saw like he figured out Hugo's clue. And at the time I knew Hugo as well. We all, honestly, we all knew Hugo since day three. They really don't okay. show that in the show. But all of us knew who he was. And I, they knew I just wouldn't say Hugo. So that's why they put me up there, which is totally cool. fair. They felt like they weren't playing with Carson as much as Hugo. So even they were even telling Chris, like you gotta do Carson and not Hugo. But Chris was playing with Carson. So it makes sense Chris mm -hmm. would guess Hugo. It makes sense I would guess Carson. So I totally get why they sent me up there. And I think on their part, that was the right move too. Yeah, and I would definitely respect their honesty and their gameplay. And I think that it kind of comes down to relationships at this point too, in a lot of ways. I mean, that could have been their moment to blindside Chris. If like this was Survivor, you know, Chris would have had to go and they would have known that. And I almost think that now- If it was I Survivor, it'd be so much easier to send him home. We would just vote Chris, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he has all the information. Like he's figuring out everyone's clues. Yeah. So it's almost like you want to keep him around. And I know sometimes you want to keep Hugo around, for example, if everyone knows it, because then he's an easy vote off. He's kind of getting like the, I don't know if it's like the ditzy edit, like the funny guy, the nice guy. What was it like playing with him? Because I saw that you were really close to him as well. Yeah, I love Hugo. He was great. I felt like the entire show, he did a really, he was just like always there for me the whole show. In my edit, you don't see, but I was really crying about him because I felt oh. like he had done so much for me with sharing clues and making me feel at home and that's another reason why I didn't pick him because I thought okay the least I can do is just like not get him out that's like morally something I was doing yeah he was really sweet I, I loved being around him him and JR I was really close with Monet I love I love I love the cast it's a great cast it, everyone is honestly just a really good person. So it was a really fun house to be in. And also such different characters. Everyone has such a different personality and I love how everyone just mingles. It's really cute. 
Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens on the end. And to kind of close out the episode, Carson, we're watching you. I know she's coming back with redemption. So I'm excited to see her story arc because she, she might want some vengeance. I'm, me too. I'm excited to see it too because I know what happens, but I don't know all these like details that yeah. the show is going to show. You know what I mean? Also, you know what's so funny? What you brought up before, like just full transparency of saying, hey, we're going to have you as the guesser and things like that. I thought they were going to put this in the show because it was so dramatic, but... When I found out I was the guesser, I knew I was going to guess Carson. So I told her, I like went up to her and I was like, Hey, I'm really sorry, Carson. I'm going to guess you. And she freaked out. Obviously I would too. She got very upset. But I think the reason she was so upset was because they don't show it in the show. She also told me that she wasn't Jeff Gordon. Oh. And I just, I didn't think she was being honest. Cause I didn't realize we were like that close that she would tell me that. I thought she thought I would tell Hugo and Hugo would tell, I don't know, JR. You know what I mean? So I took that as like, okay, I guess it is Jeff Gordon, but she was being honest with me and I just didn't believe her. So I think that's also why she really thought, I think she did think she was going to get out. And then when I said Jeff Gordon, she was like, oh yeah, I'm still in this. Like, <laughs> But no one knew who she was related to though. Like nobody knew. So you couldn't even have guessed because she, because no, still no, it seems like no one knows, but I like that yeah, you no, were honest I with don't. her. So then she played you, right? Like she did a whole acting skit. I don't I think she did acting skit I think everything she was I mean to her credit she definitely did some scheming because she did Which a good job the yeah the house said Jeff Gordon and she really played it up that way I thought the reason she was so upset was because looking back that like she told me it wasn't Jeff Gordon I mean it worked out for her because really like no, no one pegged her as anything else so you saw Chris was like I peed a little because he was like I didn't expect that at all so that was kind of crazy wow. Carson's also playing a really good game dude no, but I didn't even notice how good of a game she was playing until this episode. So now I'm like so excited because even towards the end when you were, she's like, if anyone, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> like she really went for it. It's actually insane. Also too, on the episode where I, I make uh, jewelry and I like made jewelry for a few people and you can like see it in the show. And the first time that she was guessing Cole, she's like wearing a little bracelet I made her because I was worried that she was going to go home. So th there's like little, little snippets in there where you can see like everyone's friendship just kind of dispersed throughout the show. It's really cute. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. It's such a good season. I haven't watched season one, but after I'm going to binge it. So I'm really excited to check out what that's all about. Um, can I ask you about Jenny McCarthy? So how are you guys related and what was her thoughts about you going on the show? So Jenny is my aunt. She's my mom's sister. She, she was really supportive about me going on the show. Honestly, when I called, it was more so to ask like if I should even do it. I'm I'm not honestly that big of a, a TV person. I don't really like being in front of the camera. I usually work behind it anyway. And I'm I'm so like sensitive to being perceived. I just always want people to see like my authentic self. So I was a little pressed about being on TV, but she was so encouraging. And a lot of my friends were like, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So yeah, I knew I had to take it, but she was really encouraging and sweet. She's an amazing aunt. She's a great person. Yeah. So I actually interviewed her once because I work for Fox. So I go to the Masked Singer. I'm actually going today. So Crazy. if I, yeah. So if I see her, I'm going to ask her about you. I'm going to tell her I interviewed you. Yes, that'd be crazy. Oh my God, tell her I said hi. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, what are some of like your favorite projects that she's worked on? Um, I will say, I mean, Scary Movie is really funny. I feel like she does such a good job playing that character. Um, she's actually starting a podcast with my mom. Um, and yeah. I really like that because uh, I know about, you know, their relationship growing up, but there's so many stories from their childhood that just make me learn more about her and my mom. So that's a really fun thing for me to listen to because it's like literally my relatives talking. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I also say Mass Singer just because like what a unique show and it's really kicked off. And obviously she's such a fun judge on it. She really just has oh such a great God. personality. I love yeah. watching her on it. Oh, she's so fabulous. She's so entertaining. And I love all her outfits and just like her sass. She just is so yeah. good at what she does. So I think that's so awesome that you had her as like a role model. Yeah. And what's funny too, is that really is her in real life. Like, I feel like yeah. some people definitely like turn on TV charm, but like that, like it in her house, she acts the exact same way. Like that really is just who she is. It's really charming and really fun to be around. I love it. Well, tell me a little bit about my, more about you and uh, for our audience. Like, what do you kind of do for work? Like, what are you kind of working on? Like, how is this show going to help you with your future projects? 
Oh my God, love it. Um, yeah, I kind of split my time career-wise between being a cinematographer and being a tattoo artist. I'm doing a lot more tattoo work now because there are quite a few strikes in the film industry right now. We have uh, actors on strike and writers on strike. Producers are in negotiations. It's kind of crazy. Also, as a cinematographer, um, Local 600 IATSE, which is the camera union, was uh, in negotiations like two years ago. So the whole industry is kind of like trying to get a revamp just mm. to take care of crew and take care of cast and everyone involved. So I love being a DP. That's something I've done for a while now. But yeah, I am tattooing a lot more now because of that. And that's been really fun too. I mean, it's so creative. It's a really fun outlet. I am hoping the show gets me a little more um, attention there because I just would love to full-time tattoo. It's so fun. Do you do it at um, like an ink shop or are you like free freelance? I have a home studio. So oh, cool. um, I mean, I'm hoping, actually, I wanted to use the earnings from the show to open um, a, a studio for tattoo artists and other artists. And I wanted it to be like this little collective yeah. that people could. I was hoping if I won the show, then I could just cover rent for like everyone for like a year or two. Now, obviously, that can't happen, but I'm still trying to make it happen because I would just love um like a very queer based art community to go into every day and for me to tattoo but then also like I make chain mail I I'm started rug making like I just have so many hobbies I need to yeah I can't focus on one thing so I, that's what I really want to do is make a studio that myself and artists like myself and my friends can just kind of thrive in and experiment in and you know celebrate their work <laughs> I love that it would be it would be interesting to hear on the show like who wants the money to do like what they want to do with the money and maybe necessarily like who already has money like I, it would be interesting to hear like what that means because we know on Survivor and like other shows it's like the prize means so much to different people for a lot of emotional reasons passion projects family wise so maybe we'll, well hear more about too. that when I was on the show I felt like like it's so funny because the show is surrounded by this idea of Nepo baby and to a degree that is true everyone is related to someone famous but also to a degree it isn't true because there are a few people on the show that definitely have, um, you know, privilege with money, finances, but, but there are quite a few people that don't. So yeah. I feel like when I was on the show, I'm someone that like Jen, uh, Jenny has graced my life, but financially or work-wise, I haven't really asked for any of that. So the show to me, I was like, wait, I actually need this money. Like I, I'm, you know, can't even pay rent right now. It's crazy. Yeah. So I was hoping, uh, that the show would go towards the winning would go towards someone who um would use the money for good and everyone deserves 100k but i remember specifically gabe had a really good story that he like works with kids so he wanted to use it for like underprivileged youth so out of everyone in the house i was rooting for myself for sure but once i was out i was like okay gabe has a really good reason to win so he was someone i was rooting for after that i wish that they touched on that more on the show i wish there was more talk about what the money would mean to certain people and maybe there will be in the final few episodes but I think that definitely will play a factor into how the game ends I don't even know exactly how it's going to turn out because I didn't watch season one so I kind of heard about maybe people are coming back but I don't know if it's like voting or if it's like you gotta watch season one if it was voting I feel like things would be different right then it would be such a intense social game I think that everyone is being a little, little sneaky snake right now so uh, I, I don't think it would be voting, but also I'm not going to try to give you any leads what it don't is. Tell me, you should don't watch tell me. season one, though. No, it, I think it, it's kind of what happens. I will watch season one after season two. Like, I love being in the dark right now because I'm really yeah. enjoying every episode, like not knowing so much. So You're it's cute. So so it's so fun and I, I love that you know I've had you and so many other people on and I'm going to continue to interview more cast members as the show goes on and I love how I can feel like a part of it and kind of get everyone's side of the story because it's fun for my audience it's fun for me and it's just like we're getting all the tea yeah Zachary you really are a part of it especially if you're in the dark that's crazy I love it yeah I do this with like every show so if you don't know a little bit about my background um I re I cover a lot of reality shows so I'll interview people from all different shows I'll make TikToks YouTube videos podcasts and then I also double up as a TV host on like reality TV campaigns. Like I just hop on every reality show whenever it's airing and whenever I like. And that's kind of what my business is all about. You've built a great life for yourself. That sounds so fun. I mean, I'm still working. Like 
obviously, but I definitely created my brand. So it's, it's fun to like be able to do stuff like this. And I've gotten more confident, like interviewing throughout time and like talking on camera. Cause that's taken some time to like get the right questions. So I loved having you on. I feel like this was such a good vibe and I really appreciate you coming. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, I feel like that was a great conversation. You're a really great person, obviously. So thanks for interviewing me for asking me to come on. What the hell? Yeah. Tell everyone where they can follow you and find you and book you for their next next tattoo oh my god slay okay um my username is bored baby tat bored like i'm bored baby tat um that's on instagram and tiktok uh that's pretty much where you can find me that's really my i guess i have i have a twitter but i really only made it to read tweets about the show i really don't <laughs> use twitter so just uh, instagram TikTok, bored baby tat okay and, and what are you seeing about the show like any like thing online that just like shocked you with the audience things about you or the show in general honestly I'm just I'm shocked I haven't seen that many negative comments about myself not thinking I deserve any but just <laughs> there's so many people in the world that comment negative things and with everyone who's gotten out I have seen a lot of negative comments about some people who have gotten out so I was really impressed about it but I definitely think my personality mixed with like I was slightly under edited which isn't bad but I think, uh, yeah, it's only good comments. So that's kind of what I was shocked about. I was like, okay, cool. People fuck with me. So yeah, it's, good. <laughs> it, it's definitely not the type of show to like shit on people's personalities. Like everyone is just so likable and it's it's a show to like root for people and like the competition of it. If you have me on next time, there is so much we still have to talk about because there's so much they don't show in the show. What did you think of Carly's meltdown? Because we were saying that it just kicked off the season. I mean, she definitely made the show pop off, which is kind of awesome. Hugo loves it because he got a lot of TV time from her lack of TV time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I think everyone really like kind of came for her when that happened online and honestly a little bit in the house. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I really just empathized with her because you don't know what she's going through. You don't know how badly she wants to be on the show. I know she's an actress and I think she really wanted to use the leverage of being on TV to promote that. Yeah. Um, I think she was just honestly really disappointed and clearly really shocked. I don't think she realized that she was in the running for being guest. So um, yeah, I think obviously it was a little dramatic, but I also think, um, I don't I don't blame her. We don't know what she's going through and we uh, clearly know she really wanted to be there. So that's, that's yeah. what I'll say about that. Yeah, we love Carly over here. She is hilarious. Yeah. What is, what's your um, Zodiac sign? Oh my God, do you want to guess first? Scorpio? No, but thank you for saying I'm sexual. Uh, I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> Ooh, but you know you give like Scorpio energy. Do I really? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, Slay, what's your sign? A Cancer. Oh my God. Do you know how many Cancer men are in my life? And all of them are gay. Oh my God. Okay. We need. I need to meet all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Do you live in LA? Yeah, I'm in West Hollywood. Oh my God. I was just in West Hollywood yesterday. I was okay. at Beaches. Oh my God. Maybe we can do the the podcast next time in person with Carly and then maybe anyone else that lives in LA and we can talk about the show when it's over. Actually, like like five people from the show live in LA. I'll keep it discreet, but a lot of people live in LA. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I can always cut this part out of the interview too, but I think that would be so cool to plan that. Yeah, we should. Okay, cut this part out. Uh, podcast, crazy. Yeah, that'll be so fun. My, my ultimate goal from what I was saying earlier is to host one of these shows. Like that's what I'm working towards. Oh my God, you totally should. I would die. Oh my God, you totally should. Wait, like, what would, do you know what ideally you would want to host? Would it be love oriented? Would it be gameplay oriented? I think it has to be a show that's never existed. I mean, if I have to do something to get my feet on the feet wet, obviously that's different, but the dream yeah. would be some type of new show and it would have to be dating, love and competition and gameplay all mixed into one. Okay, so that doesn't exist. Exactly. You gotta pitch it. I am- Wait, oh my God, I'm rooting for you. I would totally watch something like that. Are you kidding? That'd be amazing. Oh, yeah, it might take years. Like, I don't care how long it takes. I just know it's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Slay. That's amazing. <laughs> um, If you tried to play, like, one Survivor player on Claim to Fame, who did you want to play, replicate going into it? And then who do you think you ended up kind of an, an imitating more? Okay. I You got to help me out here with the name, okay? This okay. is, I went in with this in mind. He won two seasons ago. He's a white man, a little older. Do you know his name? I look it up. Oh, Chris or Nick? I'm forgetting his name. He's like a white guy. Wears like camo. Oh my god. I love Jam Jam, but I'm not talking about Jam Jam. I think 43. Season 43. Mike? Maybe I'm just... Yeah. Oh my god, it is Mike. You're totally right. Okay, I'll I can his... answer the question now. I'll put his picture up. 
No, I mean, people just want to see, people just want to see, uh, it's like us on FaceTime and everyone just gets to watch us. And I love that too, because that's way more like comfortable and just realistic. So, okay, Mike, he is, I, okay, I love his gameplay because I feel like I have thought about my strategy for Survivor for a while now. You got to lay low until the merge. You got to be not good at challenges. That's even why like that first challenge we did after the talent show, the one that was like three stages on Claim to Fame. Um, the first one was putting on your makeup and uh, Monet got first and I got second. And I was so pressed that I got, I was like, I got to reel it back because I didn't want to get, I didn't want to place. You saw what happened to Travis. He got yeah. the first, the first clue and then he was out immediately. So my goal was to like not do well in challenges up until like, the middle like episode five or six but there were so many goddamn team challenges that I had no control over that but that being said um I was taking that same survivor ideology that you kind of lay low for a little bit and then once you get kind of halfway you really start taking control of your game Mike I think did a really good job of that because in his season of survivor he was way too big like the first few days he was such a target remember he was like i'm gonna do my shot in the dark and we were like whoa buddy you're crazy and then he managed to reel it in and lay so low that i almost forgot about him up until like top five and then everyone kind of wanted to take him to to tribal anyway and then when he gave his pitch i was like yeah, you actually did do a lot and laying low is doing a lot. So I went into the show knowing I didn't know much about pop culture. So the best thing I could do for my game was just lay low. So I went in with Mike's mentality and I kind of feel like I also played with Mike's mentality. I think I socialized a little more than him, but um, yeah, I really think I just, I played like him. So got me to episode six. <laughs> yeah. Were you ever planning of making like a move that was going to be like blow the house out like towards the end to kind of like have like a resume for the end or is that not how it works I mean there's not really like a resume thing with claim to fame um and also I can't really make a move unless I have information or knowledge and I just I just don't know much about celebrities so I really uh I think I guess the one way I can make a move is by telling someone else to vote or by trying to throw a challenge or something like that Ooh. but um, flipping a table Throwing, yeah. a throwing a glass of wine getting mad <laughs> distracting people I don't know, whatever <laughs> causing yeah, drama I think, I mean, yeah there, oh, there was a few points i did cause drama too they didn't show but it's so we'll talk about this later we'll talk about interview. this it's crazy thank you so much for being here olivia i really appreciated our little kiki the show is so good so everyone make sure to tune in monday nights at 10 p.m. on ABC. If you guys can go cool. check they out on Olivia's Instagram, I will leave Olivia's IG down below so you can check they out. And thank you so much for being here. I loved chatting with you. You are so fun. Redheads for life. Oh, Slay. Thanks, Zachary. Thanks for having me on. Have a good day. Yes. And do not forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Or if you're listening as a podcast, please rate and review and subscribe there. Thank you all for watching. Comment down below and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.